in as much as it can be so unfortunate, but I am pretty sure that there are people who will be listening to this and they have never heard of Malcolm. They have no idea who Malcolm is. Yeah, which of course is a shame uh, because I imagine that many are probably familiar with Dr. King, the late Dr. Martin Luther King Martin Jr. Luther King. Because then that once again goes back to the whole issue of media. You know, King was celebrated and portrayed as the anti-Malcolm that because he advocated uh, nonviolence and that Malcolm uh, was demonized as somebody who was an advocate of violence. And it's so interesting because uh, at the end of his life, as you know, he had left the nation of Islam, he had become an Orthodox uh, Muslim. He made the trip, the Hajj to Mecca. And then after that, he embarked on his African tour. And Malcolm was now talking less about uh, black and white as the main issue that needs to be tackled, white racism. He was talking about white racism as a component of capitalism. So the main challenge was actually capitalism and what capitalism was doing to marginalized communities in terms of exploitation of these communities. There was a common, uh, should we say, enemy between workers that are exploited regardless of what your skin tone or skin color is or your nationality and those who have accumulated uh, resources in the hands of a few. So he was much more presenting a political economy analysis. So, uh, but they forget about that Malcolm. They want to focus on the Malcolm uh, who at the early stage was saying by any means necessary. And obviously it was understandable. They were shooting down uh, people protesting against racism in the South. They were lynching them. Uh, extrajudicial executions, bodies would be found of people, who, activists working uh, to fight against racism, uh, uh, sicking police dogs on peaceful demonstrators, hosing them down uh, with water cannons, beating them with police baton. So it was saying, everybody has a right to defend themselves. You know, that, that, that's the Malcolm that they uh, demonized, not the later Malcolm who had become uh, as much an intellectual as Dr. King was. Uh, and much more impressive because he didn't have the academic credential. You know, he never went to college. Largely self-taught and tutored by very eminent scholars. Uh, one of his uh, uh, mentors, of course, was Dr. John Henry Clark, who would give him hours and hours of tutoring. Uh, and uh, he had an insatiable appetite for reading. So Malcolm... Um, is, and for people listening that are not familiar, before you get to this book, The Dead Are Arising, I recommend you read the autobiography. Start with that one, Autobiography of Malcolm X, as told to Alex Healy. But then it tells you the impoverished upbringing that he came from, the background, that I'm sure many listeners would be familiar with and identify with, and how at, uh, as a teenager, he was already uh, committing crimes, you know, uh, involved in uh, in drug dealing, involved in 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 theft, and eventually arrested, uh, uh, convicted, and served some prison time. But when he was in prison, that is when he truly transformed uh, his life. Uh, first, he joined the Nation of Islam, which, of course. Um, for people not familiar, they really didn't follow the orthodox uh, uh, Islamic tenets. Uh, not by the, they didn't go by the Quran, for example. So they had their own interpretations of it. Uh, so orthodox Muslim would not really recognize them as Muslim. But nonetheless, the organization was known for taking people like Malcolm with criminal background and instilling them with discipline, 
with the need to educate themselves and the need to give back to their communities. And that benefited Malcolm tremendously. He read when he was in prison. By the time he came out, he served his sentence. Uh, he had become tremendously self-educated. And then he became the chief spokesperson for the nation of Islam. But Malcolm kept evolving. And obviously it started becoming clear to him that some of the, the history of the creation uh, of, uh, of, 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 of black people and white people that the nation had as part of its tenets, you know, to an intelligent person like him didn't make sense, right? And the nation also uh, prohibited its members from getting involved in active politics, right? And that, of course, also ties your hands if you want to uh, challenge the system. And I say all this as a, as a caveat, because at the end of the day, the nation did something which the US government had not been able to accomplish. In fact, the US government had done the opposite, right? Just promoting mass incarceration, criminalizing, you know, uh, African descendants in this country. The nation transformed them into law abiding citizens, into people that wanted to create their own. They had their own establishments, their own schools, their own financial institutions, um, their own restaurants. Um, so these are the type of, in fact, it's almost similar to the kind of independence that Sankara wanted for <laughs> people in Burkina Faso. The nation was yeah, doing man. that in, in, in the United States. So that's why its impact should never be diminished. But at some point, I think Malcolm intellectually outgrew the restrictions, uh, the other restrictions that I mentioned that the nation had. Uh, he, so he evolved into orthodox Muslim, into a much more political economy critique of the uh, repressed, repressive condition for sister and brothers uh, in this country. So Malcolm needs to be placed in the same category as Dr. King. And what's so ironic was that uh, at the end of his life, Dr. King was shifting toward Malcolm's direction. He had become extremely frustrated by the persistent racism and the lack of significant impact that the nonviolent approach that he had advocated all his life um, uh, was, was, was having. So in fact, if you listen to his, one of his last speech, uh, the mountaintop speech, which is also available on YouTube, you'll see that he's become, he's much more militant now. He's saying, you know, we need black economic disinvestment from institutions that don't respect us. You know, take your money away from, uh, you know, the banks controlled by European Americans and put it in uh, banks in your neighborhood. Um, don't buy particular types of products, consumer products. You know, they disrespect you. They don't uh, invest in your community. They don't hire from your community. So he was becoming much more militant. And had he lived, you know, who knows, you know, uh, if you want to also get a, a gauge of how his politics had changed, and he had also become much more focused on a political economy critique of capitalism. Another speech by Dr. King that I recommend is uh, why I am against the war in Vietnam. And that speech is also available on YouTube. And if you listen to that speech, you would uh, almost imagine like he had just sat in a, a lecture by Samir Amin <laughs> when he, his critique of capitalism. So the two are actually converging. So uh, uh, King also, and this is not widely taught as well, also saw the need for developing that relationship with uh, the African continent. He never had the time or opportunity uh, to go on the kind of tour that Malcolm did in 1964, the year he was killed. But to see how Africa 
and Kwame Nkrumah and the independence of Ghana inspired Dr. King. Um, there's a speech on YouTube called Birth of a New Nation. And that's the speech he gave after he came back from the independence celebration in Ghana. Many people uh, may forget this, but Dr. King who actually attended Ghana's independence celebration. He was only 27 years old, but Kwame Nkrumah had recognized uh, Dr. King's brilliance and genius at that early age and invited him uh, amongst the many American dignitaries who were invited uh, to attend Ghana's independence celebration in 1957. So that speech will give you the sense of how he was inspired. You know, he talk about, you know, crying tears, hearing Nkrumah speak about independence and seeing the British flag coming down and the Ghanaian flag going down. So uh, Dr. King, uh, Malcolm, had they not been prematurely uh, killed, who knows how the relationship would have evolved between Africans in diaspora, uh, particularly the United States, and Africans on the continent. So uh, coming back to your question, we need to revive that effort in a very significant way.